So once we've brought our PNG cutout creature design into our landscape, and we've decided on its basic size and its basic placement, like whether it's in the foreground, the middle ground, the background, how large it is, you can even have part of your creature cut off, right? I could have like a big head coming into the scene if that makes the most sense. You just don't want your creature hidden and, and uh, not taking up enough space to be seen. So now I'm just going to set up some of the assets I need to layer this creature into the environment, kind of like putting props around it. I'm noticing that the feet need to overlap with the foreground. So here's my creature. You see how its foot is on top of the foreground. So when the foreground goes on top of it, I need my feet, if I like this placement, to, um, to be visible. So I'm going to use a crisp eraser here. Not at 100% opacity, because sometimes I do want to blend it a little bit. But basically, I'm taking away just where I need it, that little halo on the foreground element that I made from my JPEG background. Now, if I had my PSD file, which I do in my time machine at home, I don't know how it got hurt, but I, I know how to look it up because I have it named with my name and all of that. Then I would already have this cut out because that's part of the landscape I set up. All right, so, but what's cool about doing it this way, kind of sinking it in, is you see how the, the paw kind of gets diminished as it's erased behind the foreground. You can even see little traces of the cobweb still on top of the paw. Same thing with the foreground elements here and how the paws integrate into the water. And if I ever want more debris, I can always just go to my landscape, for instance, my middle ground, and just copy a chunk of the earth where the paw is, duplicate that, and then move it above my creature, right? And then just erase away from it in order to get a little bit of the dirt on the paws. just to help the believability. But we haven't a, a talked about the lighting yet. Basically, we need to figure out the full placement and the claws, but now the claws are kind of sinking into the earth instead of just sitting on top like a sticker. All right, so once you have that, now we want to use your creature, which I'm going to mark the color of the layer as green. So green is my creature layer. And if you're not sure about placement, you can always make duplicates of it and try different sizes with Command T. I can try flipping it horizontally. I can try making it a lot bigger and putting it in the foreground. I could even try putting it between, actually that's kind of cool, uh, between the different mushrooms. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to take that foreground, I'm going to duplicate that, put it up on top of my creature, and just a rough cut. See these mushrooms that are less in focus? I'm going to cut out around the ones that are in focus, just roughly. So that my creature can kind of come from behind. but it hides a little too much of the paw. But 
So you can try lots of different placements without hurting any pixels. And just kind of get a sense of how it might work. So that's kind of cool, but it kind of hides maybe too much of my creature. So I might like this, this composite better. And then I might think, okay, let's try to sink it maybe a little bit lower. And then let's see that tree in front of it. And let's build up that texture. But what if your creature is not matching the setting quite right? Maybe its legs aren't quite in the right place. So this is where we can use Puppet Warp. And to do that, you're first, let's see, going to identify the creature and the size. And you can actually do this while it's still a smart object, which is pretty amazing. So we're not going to lose any resolution or any options. And I'm going to turn off every layer except for my creature, just so you can see it clearly. And then I'm going to say, Edit Puppet Warp. And like the warp tool, it's going to create kind of a lattice work, like a chicken wire over the, the creature. But instead of the warp tool, which just does a nine square grid that you can push and pull, this uses the cutout outline of your PNG combined layer. And it makes a polygon mesh over it, almost like it's a 3D model. Then you'll see that your cursor turns to a little push pin. And with that push pin, you are able to to click on different parts of your creature to lock it in place. Like if I knew those feet were in the right place, I want to control the nose, the back hips, maybe this front paw. Then you can use those points to warp and drag your creature. So you see the leg that's not pinned, it's going to be free moving. Or if I want to kind of shrink its rib cage, make its uh, spine bend, if I want to raise its leg and angle its paw, I can do all of that with puppet work, as long as I have a pretty good silhouette and a good understanding of its anatomy. Now, I'm going to show you kind of the safe way to play with these poses, because this does change how your pixels are expressed for your creature. And so you want to do it on duplicate layers. Now Puppet Warp can do amazing things, but it also doesn't change your pixels, it just warps between them. So if you use it too much, it becomes like macaroni-ish. And a little too loose. But for instance, I can open and close the jaw because I have the jaw open, but I can't close it all the way without some pixels winning out over other pixels, right? And so we're trying to get the most out of our production model. We're not trying to change the model for this. So then to like fix the puppet warp, you just hit return. But after you hit return, then it's fully pixelated. So you want to do it on a duplicate so you don't lose your work. So I'm just going to go before Puppet Warp, and you can see the difference it has. So now let's use that on a duplicate. I'll make that duplicate orange. Just color the eyeball orange. And now I'm going to put it in its setting with the foreground on top of it. And now when I do Puppet Warp, turn off the one behind, I'm really thinking about, does the angle of this creature and where its feet are match the environment? Like I might want to pin its foot and move its foot down a little bit. Then I might want to pin its hip and move its hip 
forward a bit or back. See, paying attention to kind of how the creature is seen. I can take its neck and I can adjust that and its hips will stay in the same place. So I can kind of hunch it over. I can take its rib cage, the back of its rib cage on its spine and bend it down. All in moderation. I can even take its foot and kind of move that up and over. I can take its muzzle, shift it forward and down. It's a great way to kind of animate someone, something eating. We're going to do animation in our next assignment. We're not going to do sound effects. That's a different class, different discipline, but it, that's what's fun. All right. I'm going to shift the jaw back a little bit just so it all feels like it kind of fits into this environment a little bit more. Because I have a little bit of separation of the tail in my outline in the silhouette, I can even play with how the tail expresses itself, right? Which is pretty fun. So especially if there's a part of your creature you want to, to show off in the setting, Puppet Warp can help you with the pose that will get you there. And because I did it on a duplicate, I can always compare it with what came before. So there it looks a little stiff, looks like it's stalking prey. Here it looks a little bit more integrated and even maybe just a little bit more chill, even though it's got that, that really fearsome expression on its mouth. And you can keep puppet warping. And as long as it's a smart object, you're not going to lose resolution quality. So I can do uh, edit. Or it's rather, yeah, edit puppet warp again. And this time you have to, it will remember your pins, which is really helpful. Older versions didn't. But this time I'm going to close the mouth maybe a little bit more. And I can even warp it on the inside and maybe change the expression just subtly. I can arch the eye a little bit up and down. Remember, if you use it too much, it becomes like macaroni. So these are just little adjustments to get your creature to your puppet to really work in the environment. You can't change the total angle, but you can definitely change where it's placed on the ground plane or in the air. A lot of your creatures with wings, if you want to make them look like they're flying, you don't want their feet flat on the ground, right? You want to like use puppet work to angle their feet back, like we would if we were flying. We kind of tuck our feet underneath us. Okay, so that's placement. And I think that helps. You don't have to just take it as is. Now, we, we know the placement. Now we're going to clean up just the basic edges and areas. And I'm just going to use this fairly hard-edged eraser at a 62% opacity because I like the little separation of the shadows you get. And again, I want those spider webs to kind of still show up. I'm going to soften this a little bit. This is why I really like using the tablet so I have pressure sensitivity for size. And you're really paying attention to where your creature engages with the setting. So First place I look is where the feet are touching the ground, right? what they overlap. And landscapes luckily have a lot of debris and dirt and atmosphere that can be helpful. If you ever want to erase away from your creature, you're going to have to rasterize it. And to do that, you just right click on it, make sure you have the placement where you want, because that's, as a smart object, this is going to lock in your resolution. And then once you rasterize it, you can erase 
from your creature as well.